Welcome everyone and thank you for attending today's HIMSS Learning Center webinar, UConn Health Streamlines Care Team Communication in a New Outpatient Pavilion and State-of-the-Art Hospital Tower, sponsored by Volt. My name is Mike Milliard, I'm editor of Healthcare IT News and I will be your moderator today. A new eight-story pavilion at UConn Health consolidates outpatient care in one convenient location. This webinar will show how a smart smartphone platform connects the care team, enables collaboration with the inpatient staff, and supports streamlined workflows that improve the patient experience. Our speakers for today are Donna Napomacino, Senior Clinical Systems and Connected Care Business Analyst at UConn Health, Roberta Romeo, Project Manager of Strategic Projects and Clinical Systems at UConn, and Nyla Maroon, Marketing Communications Director at Volt. So with that, I'll hand it over to Nyla to begin the presentation. Thank you, Mike. I'm excited to give a brief overview of Volt to provide some context for Donna and Bert's presentation. Volt is a mobile healthcare technology company that develops smartphone communication solutions on one platform to improve clinical workflow, quality of patient care, and staff engagement. Ten years ago, Volt was first to provide hospitals with a unified smartphone solution that enables care teams to exchange information securely both inside and outside the hospital. Our main offering, Volt Platform, is a uniquely powerful communication foundation that connects caregivers no matter where they are. It not only offers effective communication via voice, alarms, and text, but also provides a patient-centric directory where caregivers can view everyone by name, role, rooms, or patients, making it easy to see staffing availability and status at a glance. Today, Donna and Bert will focus mainly on our collaboration solutions which include Volt One, our shared smartphone app for bedside caregivers inside the hospital, and Volt Me, our BYOD app for physicians outside the hospital, and Volt Messenger, our desktop client for stationary coworkers. UConn Health chose Volt for clinical communication across multiple facilities. Their 1,700 users rely primarily on text messaging to communicate with texting preferred over phone calls 21 to 1. Now that you have an idea of what Volt does and how we improve care communication and care coordination, I'd like to hand it over to Bert so she can get to the part you've all been waiting for. Bert? Yes, hi everyone. Thanks, Nyla. I'm Bert Romeo. Most of the projects I manage at UConn are in the clinical technology space, both inpatient and outpatient centric. And managing Volt is just one of the more recent projects I've worked on. We're really happy to have this opportunity to share our Volt story with you today. So to start, I wanted to provide a brief overview of UConn Health. Hopefully, this will allow you all to easily compare our facility to yours. We are on a 206-acre campus in the beautiful Farmington Valley of Connecticut with three major branches that make up UConn, academics, research, and clinical care. I'll start with our graduate school, which has a variety of sciences, including research, public health, as well as biomedical sciences. Our dental and medical schools consist of 55 accredited programs, and we've graduated over 4,000 providers and just a bit over 1,600 dentists since the late 1970s. This year alone, we'll have about 1,400 medical and dental students and residents at UConn. Secondly, our research programs have won about $85 million in awards in 2016. And the four embryonic stem cell lines are the first personalized genomics-driven vaccination that prevents the recurrence of ovarian cancer. And another thing is we're currently participating in a regenerative engineering research challenge to grow a human knee by 2027 and a whole limb just three years after that. Overall, we've garnered about 135 patents over the years. And to support the three branches, we have about 1,100 physicians in more than 60 specialties and about 600 scientists. We employ about 5,600 people who have membership in eight unions, and we have lots of full and part-time volunteers that also help us out. On the previous slide, I mentioned that we have three branches. So last, but certainly not least, is the meat of what we're here for, our clinical care. We have two inpatient towers with 224 beds. 
with 9,000 annual admissions, 33,000 emergency room visits, and about 11,000 surgeries. In the outpatient world, we have 35 outpatient practices in our new outpatient pavilion, plus another 10 that are located off campus throughout our state. Our outpatient visits total over a million encounters annually, and we have 130 dental treatment rooms serving nearly 160,000 dental patients per year. So here are the three learning objectives for this session today. Expediting patient throughput in an outpatient setting, and we'll show you how we did that with a review of some of our outpatient workflows with the help of a few Visio diagrams. We'll talk today about how we use text messaging to collaborate both within the outpatient setting and from our outpatient to our inpatient department. And finally, how we've used Bolt to improve our communication and workflow with our ancillary support departments. So let's start with the first, streamlining workflows in the OP. I'll refer to the outpatient pavilion as the OP. So in order to present this first objective, I want to start at the beginning. We did things a bit out of order because unlike most Volt customers, we started with Volt in our outpatient pavilion. Most customers start in the inpatient world. The reason we did this was because of a little $800 million venture called Bioscience Connecticut. Approved in 2011, our governor, Dan Malloy, wanted to reinvent the state's economy and position Connecticut as a leader in bioscience research and improve access to world-class medicine for our residents of Connecticut. There were three main elements to his plan. First, renovate existing research facilities and our inpatient tower. Second, build two new buildings, an outpatient pavil pavilion and a second inpatient tower. And third, build three new parking garages. We're here today to talk mostly about the first of these initiatives, the outpatient pavilion. That was built with the intention of consolidating our on-campus dispersed physician practices in order to provide a more patient-centric care model. At the time, we had many temporary buildings located throughout our campus. And I know you can't see me, but I'm using my fingers when I do air quotes when I say the word temporary because those were built in the early 80s and they were intended to be open for just a few years. But here in the middle of the 2011, 12, 13, they were causing a real burden for our patients. You see, if a patient needed to see their primary care provider and their neurologist on the same day, they couldn't just park once and then walk to each appointment because these buildings were likely not close to each other. We'd always see patients wandering around on foot trying to find a building tucked away on the outskirts of our campus. And because of this, unfortunately, would arrive late to their visit. It would make for some pretty unhappy patients and providers. The OP would be a real solution to this problem. So we were designing an eight-story tower over 300,000 square feet with seven clinical floors. It would be home to about 600 employees and serve about 4,000 visitors per day. It comprised, it's comprised of 235 exam rooms, which is an increase of 84 exam rooms from the 35 practices that moved into the building. So I know I still haven't answered the question, why the need for a universal communication tools for this new, brand new building? Why in our outpatient area first? Well, we had this fancy new pavilion being constructed, and not only would it have all the dispersed practices in one location, each would have more square footage than the temporary buildings to which they were accustomed. Another difference would be that while the temporary buildings had one check-in, check-out area per practice, that was right next to our exam rooms, in the OP, there would just be one that would be used for multiple clinics on each floor. These would no longer be in close proximity to the clinical areas, so they prohibited quick access to the clinical staff that our clerks were used to. We also had some new goals for this building. We hoped to maintain a quiet and serene atmosphere 
and this meant we wouldn't be installing overhead paging. Also, in an effort to increase privacy, there'd be no traditional patient status boards. And of course, with every project, there's a budget, and for budgeting purposes, over-door notification lights were voted off the island, as were phones in the exam rooms. We would have neither of these in the new pavilion. And lastly, I'm not sure if you can see in the photograph the pink pig and the red crab beanie babies. Yep, in our temporary buildings, each provider was assigned a beanie baby that was hung on the doorknob when a patient was ready to be seen. I'm not sure how they decided which would be Dr. Krabby, but I know I wouldn't want to be that patient, a patient of his. Anyway, we said no to the Beanie Baby system, but knew we needed to be creative with our communication workflow. So once the building design was set and construction was started, we immediately set out to determine the best communication solution. A project was submitted for approval, an RFP was created, and a project team was assembled. To anyone who's ever been on a project, you all know how important scope is. Well, not only did we need to combat the changes made to the employee's day-to-day -day activities, we needed to break down some barriers established with an archaic paging system, improve communication between our inpatient and outpatient staff, and integrate with the new University Tower patient alarms and physiological monitors something we'd later refer to as connected care. And by the way, that university inpatient tower construction project, it wasn't even in the design phase at the time of this RFP, so we really had to be creative. We received four initial proposals, and due to the costs associated with one, we invited three vendors to present and then selected Volt to participate in a proof of concept pilot project. Because an inpatient unit and an associated support area had to be considered while scoping, we wanted these departments to be somewhat close to each other. It would make it easier for Donna and I to physically support the pilot, and more importantly, to be able to keep our Wi-Fi upgrade costs low. We looked at two main areas, general surgery with general medicine versus our cardiac step-down unit with cardiology and shadowed both of these departments. Originally, surgery was the front runner because they've always been known as early adopters at UConn. However, choosing them would have made the pilot difficult to contain because the number of departments and providers that admit patients to the surgical floor, there was just too many of them for us to manage. So we chose cardiology, our EP lab, our cardiac step-down inpatient unit, and our cath lab. And Luckily for us, they were all right in the same general vicinity. So we had an inpatient unit, an outpatient department, and not one but two support departments. We created our budget. We looked at hardware and licensing and the integration with our PBX. Our pilot ran for three months over the summer of 2014. We created a few surveys both at the start and at the end of the pilot to understand the point of view from our clinical staff. And we're going to be happy to share those surveys with you all at the end of the WebEx, so keep an eye out for those. So communicating via text messaging. During the team shadowing, we tagged alongside the department staff, including managers, nurses, MAs, clerks, and providers, documenting communication workflows via Visio. The second objective for the session will show how we use text messaging to communicate. And I'll do this with two before and after Visio diagrams that we created during our proof of concept. Before I get to the actual Visio slides, I wanted to show you all a, a quick screen, uh, screen grab of the Volt directory and what text messages look like in Volt. By showing you this, I was hoping to put some context around the difference in the before and after clinical workflows. As you can see in the photo on your left, the Volt directory makes it incredibly easy to see who's available and who's busy, but not just in your department, but in any department. And on the right, just how simple it is to ask someone to join you in a patient room without the need to make a phone call or to page someone. So this first Visio 
shows the workflow when a provider is ready for the nurse or the medical assistant to complete an outpatient visit. In the past, in our small temporary buildings, they would simply open the exam room door and yell down the hallway for the nurse to come in. If she was in with another patient or perhaps in the med room, the doctor would leave the exam room, walk up to the front desk, and ask the receptionist to find the nurse. That receptionist, in turn, would have to leave their desk to look for the nurse. Also, in the inpatient world, the use of pagers was the best tool to find someone. But because nursing only used the central unit phone number, paging back was cumbersome at best. The nurse would often not have the time to wait with the unit clerk at the front desk for the provider to call back. This would require the unit clerk to go find the nurse, leaving the provider on hold, and it wasn't productive for either. With Volt, the doctor can simply let the patient know he's going to Volt the nurse to wrap up the visit or to administer medications, for example. I want to add that even though we have a bunch of Volt in use posters all around our clinics and in the hospital, we require the staff to let patients and visitors know that when we are on our phones, it's to collaborate about their care using Volt. And as you can see here, Volt allows direct connection to the provider with exactly what the nurse needs. The text is most often enough, and it's such a time saver. Here's a before Visio for one of our support areas, the EP lab that was part of our pilot. It's just five steps here on the Visio, but like the previous diagram, the vicious paging cycle would happen. The paging, the not being around, the shouting to find someone, the infuriated providers, the annoyed nurses, it was a real problem. You can see here, it's just one step text directly to the care provider and be done to move on to the next task of your very busy day. And that's all for me today. I'm going to hand it back to Mike for a quick poll. All right, yes, we're gonna take a moment here for a brief poll. And the question is, what do you see as your biggest challenge in using smartphones for care team communication? Uh, whether it's HIPAA compliance and security, mobile device management and loss prevention, physician opposition to pager replacement, Wi-Fi network viability, or end user adoption. So we'll let you have about a minute to uh, fill those in and, and give us your, your opinion. A couple more seconds. And those are the results. Looks like mobile device management is uh, is a big one, and, and, and so is Wi-Fi. Um, and with that, I will hand it over to Donna to continue the presentation. Hi there, it's Bert back again. So a little technical difficulties, I apologize for that. Um, so getting back to the, the workflows created and executed for the pilot provided to or proved to us that Volt would enhance communication in the outpatient pavilion. Donna wanted, was, built these slides to show you some real examples from some of our clinics on how we utilize Volt in an outpatient environment. So although prior to opening the outpatient pavilion, we created workflows and standard operating procedures, the clinics came up with some pretty intuitive ways on their own to use Volt for communicating. Our ophthalmology department sees about 80 to 120 patients daily, and Volt is key in ophthalmology for communication between technicians and providers, medical assistants and providers, the front desk and clinical staff. And some key uses of Volt in ophthalmology are 
When a patient arrives, a group message is sent via Volt Messenger. It alerts the group that the next patient has arrived. This helps monitor the patient wait times since the text message has a timestamp. Often at checkout, a patient has an additional question for the doctor or the tech. So what happens is a group message sent via Volt Messenger is sent to an entire group to get somebody up front right away to answer the patient's question. During a patient exam, an unexpected ophthalmology test is often needed. A Volt 1 group message is sent locating a tech to administer the test. Volt is also used for contacting the resident nurse in ophthalmology. She is volted by anyone who may need her for such things as a diabetic patient has having symptoms or a dye injection for a procedure that needs to be administered. Volt is also a primary source used for communicating with other clinics in the outpatient pavilion, as well as staff and providers in the university tower. Op ophthalmology created what we call pods. In the, visio, in the uh, slide above, you can see the picture of a pod for a schedule for one day. Each pod has a staff assignment done by the clinical coordinator, and a pod consists of exam rooms, one provider, one or more technicians, and a dictation room that's central to the exam room. We also set up AM and PM pods so that when they want to talk to group messages in ophthalmology, the group messages are sent to pods. In the, in the early morning, a front desk will send out a good morning group message to each pod through Volt Messenger, and the message will say something like, good morning pod one, Dr. D, and includes everyone assigned. This is done to let everyone in the pod know that the pro watch provider they're working with for the day, and that each staff member knows who else is assigned to their pod. The group message is now on their phone already, and this will make it easy to respond to the whole pod when communicating. The same thread is used and they don't have to recreate a group message. The front desk also creates, as I said, an, an all-day AM and an all-day PM group message. This is due to the fact that our ophthalmology has a high call-out rate and staffing can change frequently throughout the day. These are just some of the intuitive ways ophthalmology uses Volt messaging in the outpatient pavilion. So general medicine is um, one of our largest clinic in the outpatient pavilion. Uh, if you look at the blueprint, the rooms are arrayed, arranged in a maze, which makes it very hard to run back and locate sta staff quickly. Volt is key when finding, locating, and communicating with staff. Similar to ophthalmology, Volt is used to monitor how long a patient has been waiting via the message timestamp. At check-in, a Volt message is sent to that medical assistant for that patient, letting him or her know your next patient has arrived. This message timestamp is used to monitor the patient's wait time and ensure the patient is updated frequently. If the patient is late because of a long check-in line, this is also communicated in a Volt message. This information is sent so the patient doesn't lose his or her appointment spot. And providers usually have time during the day to check their, do not usually have time to check their email. So if there's an urgent email that someone sends, they can bolt the provider to let them know to check their email right away. Patients can have a nurse visit only appointment to remove stitches, receive a shot, and other things that providers are not needed for. The clinic will try to avoid any wait times for these patients by using Volt to message a nurse right away. This gets the patient in and out quicker. And finally, with the Beanie Baby notification system removed, the medical assistant now sends a Volt message to the provider's phone to let him or her know the patient is waiting in the exam room. So, providing smartphones with text messaging to support departments is our second um, um, message here today. Volt gives us some real advantages with our ancillary departments improving clinical workflow, and I'll highlight a few of those today. First, we'll look at food services. Volt makes it easy to discuss dietary requests. The patient can easily pick up the phone and order from a menu, just like a restaurant. 
But if a patient is a cardiology patient and wants to order steak and potatoes, the uh, clinical, the food services can easily look that up on their medical record and vault the nurse to say, to ask if the patient's off their dietary restrictions. Typically, that dietary restriction is said verbally to the patient, and they can't wait to get on the phone to order their, their dinner, and it hasn't made it to the EMR yet. In addition, because our staff are sometimes very hard to find because we have a large campus with multiple buildings, to track transport is very difficult. Bolt gives us the capability to track when transport reads their uh, text messages. Now we know exactly when the message is read and let transport know that they're getting staff um, picked up. Physical therapy and rehab services, when uh, patients will get referrals from either another outpatient practice or an inpatient unit. This is key in showing you how we link our inpatient and outpatient worlds, such as neurology, neurosurgery, general medicine, to name a few. Rehab, our rehab manager has both inpatient and outpatient staff, and this allows her to communicate directly with both of them. And then finally, in our pharmacy, in the past, we would be using, we'd be using a paging system, and you can see that the pharmacist has no way to triage these three pages that arrive at, all at one time. And we only have one pharmacist uh, on staff at nighttime. So you can see that an RN from ICU paged, an RN from Med 3 paged, and an RN from Ortho paged. And I would think as a pharmacist that ICU was the highest uh, urgent message. As you can see, with Volt, the ICU just needed an aspirin for a refill, an aspirin for their Pixis machine, whereas in cardiology, they needed a, a cardiology med stat in Med 3. So some of the Volt uh, benefits to wrap up we use Volt so extensively at UConn that we've adopted it as a verb. We Volt staff, and as a result, we create new streamlined clinical workflows using Volt platform. A, feature, a key feature we keep an eye on to alert providers if a patient has been in the waiting room too long. Our provider collaboration has been enriched with Volt, allowing a high degree of peer-to-peer -peer communication and consultations with ad which adds values to our patients' well-being. We have max maximized our asset utilization by removing common communication constraints related to people, processes, and budget decisions. Even with the additional exam rooms, the time savings with Volt has enabled us to provide quality care for a growing population without adding clinical staff because operationally we are more efficient and effective. With Bolt, we're able to send critical stat radiology and lab test result messages directly to our providers' phones. Our providers are so impressed with how quick, much quicker they can review these criti critical reports, enabling, enabling them to make timely decisions. Replacing noisy phones and overhead paging adds to the healing impact of a quieter environment on, with our patient experience. And with fewer interruptions, Nurses and providers can respond faster, answering their patients' questions more uh, easily. So some lessons that we've learned. We definitely learned some great lessons along the way that I'd like to share with you today. A misuse of priority messages was definitely one of them. We found that staff was misusing the priority message feature in Volt which uses a different sound to alert their peers for non-important issues such as it's time to go to lunch. Things clearly not a priority. It got to the point where the priority sound message rang so many times during the day, the staff became immune to it. So when it truly was an urgent message, there was no urgent reaction. So clearly define what type of incidents staff are allowed to use for this priority message. Such issues such as a disgruntled or a violent patient or a patient having a medical emergency, those are things that are a priority. Another lesson learned was the amount of extensions we reserved for our Volt phones. We didn't have enough at first. 
We integrated Volt with our PBX at UConn. And what that means is we have a voice chunk, a SIP in our case, set up between Volt and the PBX, which is our voice server. This allows internal calls to be made from a front desk to a Volt phone using the wireless network and vice versa. We reserved Volt extensions on the PBX and found that we were quickly running out. So be sure, we had uh, reserved 2,000 of them. So be sure to reserve enough for growth. Also, think about adding the extensions to your hospital directory. This is something we're in the process of doing right now and wish that we had done it sooner. We found that although a user can look in the Volt directory for an extension, they were much more comfortable and familiar with the use of our Yukon Health directory, and we've had many requests to put the Volt extensions in there. Another lesson learned was about, about our Volt directory and how important this, the build of this would be. I can re remember working side by soul, side with Volt to create the Volt directory for our new inpatient tower. They could not stress enough how important it would be, and boy, we should have listened. Looking back, we should have given much more time and effort to building the structure and invite the key staff. This year, because of feedback from our staff, she, Donna had to rebuild our directory, which was a really big task. So the lesson learned is to spend more time when creating it and get it right the first time. It's much harder to try and fix it later. We also learned that you could, uh, should clearly communicate to staff that Volt usage is for staff and patient business use only, not personal use. The Volt phones in our inpatient environment are continuously getting alerts and alarms, leaving much less, less time for texting. The, vo the phones in the OP use only voice and text, giving them much more time for texting. And we found that staff would often be texting their peers with personal messages not pertaining to work. It's really important to clearly define the rules. These personal and unrelated work text messages sometimes led to timely, in timely investigations that could have been eliminated had we clearly defined the rules up front. And last but not least, we require Volt Me, any staff that have Volt Me on a personal device to use also have Mobile Iron. It's a mobile device management tool. It was a bit overwhelming to learn of all the myths surrounding Mobile Iron. People thought they can see what I'm doing, they can see the apps I've downloaded, they can monitor what I'm doing, they can wipe my phone clean. The myths go on and on. We've done multiple presentations, consultations, and classes on educating Volt Me staffers that these myths are just not true. So if you can dispel these myths early on to get the providers on board from the beginning, you'll be much better off. And lastly, our staff satisfaction. Oftentimes, technology systems are forced on our staff for regulatory or safety purposes and a lot of those applications are not welcome changes. Volt was one of those projects that we believe is really making a difference in our staff's workday. And here's a few to summarize. Team-based collaboration lends itself to less duplication of effort, allowing our care teams to focus on important tasks throughout their day. Dynamic schedules and call-outs no longer co cause coverage confusion and provides ease in clinical team assignment changes. Providing technology tools adds to the spirit of ongoing performance improvement initiatives at UConn. Not only do missed messages result in inefficient use of work time and hospital resources, which impact productivity, staff morale and satisfaction reduces the likelihood of errors. Clinicians being able to communicate directly instead of waiting for callbacks or getting information secondhand has been such a satisfier and a time saver. So we have some future plans at UConn. As we renovate our existing Connecticut tower, each area will be upgraded with the Volt Secure Wi-Fi, enabling more clinics and inpatient units to communicate using secure messaging. We're upgrading another building, our muscular skeletal building, that's separate from the tower so they can communicate with their second location in the outpatient pavilion. 
Some of our off-site locations are also being upgraded with the Volt Secure Wi-Fi so they too can communicate with our Farmington campus staff using Volt. And we'll also be upgrading the iOS on the Volt phones in the OP this year. As for integrations with Volt, the EPIC integration with Connected Care will be in April this year. We will be sending EPIC alerts and messages to our Volt phones. We've already been considering the implementation of TUGS in the University Tower, which is a delivery me me method uh, with our pharmacy. Uh, it's a robot delivering pharmacy medications. This will send alerts and critical message to the Volt phones when the TUG has uh, arrived. Our capsule implementation going live at the same time as EPIC is the data capture from our OR rooms, PACU and GI. This will also be integrated with Connectall to enable us to send time-sensitive message to our Volt phones. And finally, our local paramedics have also asked to be on Volt, and this is something we are considering. I really hope this has given you some insight and ideas on implementing Volt in your outpatient or inpatient environments. I'm going to turn it back over to Nyla with um, I'm sorry, to Mike. No, to Nyla. I'm sorry, to Nyla. With <laughs> right. You got it right, Bert. Thank you. Um, I wanted to take a, a break just for a minute before we take some questions to mention that Volt will be at HIMSS 18 this year in Las Vegas, March 5th through 9th. And if you're interested in seeing a demo of Volt platform, please visit us at booth 7131 if you're in attendance. You can also secure a demo slot by visiting us at volt.com. And now I'll go ahead and hand it over to Mike for a Q&A. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, we already do have a few questions uh, lined up, but we uh, encourage you, please, to uh, submit your own. Just type them into the questions box and click Submit. Uh, first up, we have someone wondering, why did you start your smartphone communication project in the outpatient pavilion rather than inside the hospital? Well, and this is Bert, so I did answer that a bit in the PowerPoint. I'll uh, go into it a little bit further. Because we took away exam room phones, we had no way to communicate to nursing while they were in our patient room. So this really expedited, uh, Bolt really expedited the communication, and our outpatient pavilion was the first of the buildings that we uh, constructed. Great. Uh, someone else is wondering whether you could talk a bit more about the different tones for different types of messages. Are there also different tones used for various uh, you know, alarms and alerts? Yep. So we worked very closely with Connectall and our physiological monitors and our Rowland nurse call system because we know that nurses are used to hearing certain tones for certain monitors, so we were able to download the waveform file uh, from each of those vendors and have the alerts and alarms sound exactly like you're used to. Uh, another question here, have you been able to track improvements in patient flow and wait times from your old way of working uh, to your new system? Yep, so wait times are now tracked via our read receipts in Volt Texts. That coupled with a beeper system that's similar to one used in a restaurant that we have been able to reduce wait times and increase our survey scores. All right. Uh, how did you address uh, the BYOD issue? You know, do you have on-site technical support? Yep. So we have a gentleman called Mike, and we call him Mobile Mike. He um, is he and a partner of his are the two folks that support our mobile systems, including Volt, and they. Um, so to get back to the BYOD, um, I will tell you that our rollout was slow. We were one of the first ones to implement Volt Me uh, three or four years ago, and we've just been um, petitioned by our medical board to announce that Volt is the one uh, form of communication between providers and nurses. So any of the providers, I think we we're at about 60% right now. Any, and we're about 80, or we're about 90% in the outpatient pavilion and 60% in the inpatient world. And as of about three months ago, uh, as a, again, as I said, the medical board has deemed that Volt is our one true communication tool. So we've been setting up multiple um, 
uh, on-site sessions where providers will come to us and we'll help them provision their phones. We do have a few folks that show up with a flip phone, and those folks we encourage to get a phone or, um, or they can't communicate using Bolt. And, you know, how did your clinical staff adjust to using smartphones instead of phones and pagers? You know, did you have any issues, you know, with regard to, to user adoption? Um, we didn't. With the outpatient pavilion, they, they had no other way to communicate. The, as I said, the square footage of the new outpatient pavilion was such that it, it's a maze. It's literally a, a, a corn maze. The exam rooms weave in and out, and people just couldn't find each other. So it is a true time saver. If I were to go into that outpatient pavilion and tell them I was going to take away their Volt phones, I wouldn't have a job anymore. Um, so, so they really adopted it very well. Someone else is wondering whether staff or physicians have asked for wearables or hand-free communications instead of mobile phones. You know, aren't mobile phones sometimes a bit bulky to carry around? So we did. One of the, uh, as I mentioned, we had three, uh, we had four vendors respond, and one of the vendors was one of the hands-free. And we felt that with privacy issues and with, our healing environment of reduction of noise, that that didn't suit our, our, our goals. So um, everybody, I, I, I find it hard to find out of 100 people, 95 people that don't have a phone within three feet of them, in a pocket, in a purse, in a briefcase. So, so it wasn't a hard thing to adopt. And uh, what did the patients think of all this? What did they think about the texting? Did you ever have to explain that it wasn't a personal text that they were sending? Yeah, so we have, throughout the organization, we have posters and flyers all around. They, they are even in their inpatient packages and their outpatient um, folders, explaining that Volt is um, part of our collaboration of care. We'll even show them. Um, some of the folks are really interested in what we're doing, and and we show them the, the the phone and explain to them that we're collaborating on their care, so that if they do, if they're seeing their PCP and they need, say, a neurology consult, because they're all in one building, uh, uh, sometimes a neurologist can come right up, or they can make the appointment right then and there. So our patients are really benefiting from from Volt. Very good. Um, well, listen, I want to thank uh, all our presenters for a really terrific and informative presentation. And thanks, of course, to the audience for joining us today. Uh, it's about time to wrap up, but we'd uh, like to thank you once again. And uh, please be sure to complete the evaluation uh, that will be popping up on your screen at the conclusion of the event and share your thoughts with us. And just a reminder that today's session will be available on demand until February 20th, 2019 through the HIMSS Learning Center. Thanks again to everyone, and have a great day.